Father God, we just welcome you into this place. Father God, we just ask for your mighty presence to be here. And uh, Father, for all of those out there that are listening at home, Father God, just we just want you to just lay that fear down at his feet, Father God, and just rest in him. We are trusting you, Father. We are trusting that your presence is with us, that you're going to carry us, and that you are our rock. And we pray all this in your precious holy name. Amen. <clears throat> this is my commandment.
that I want us to look at tonight comes out of Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 1. But, but, but before we get there, you see, we know that God loves us so much that there's many gifts that He gives each and every one of us. Now, these gifts that He gives us are unearned. And one of the gifts that He gives us, now think about this, is the earth. Now, we've got a choice. We can either take care of the earth or we can completely destroy it. But I believe that we are destroying the earth. I believe that we are not, not taking care of the earth the way God wants us. And, and we ought to be blessed. We ought to be blessed because of all the gifts that He gives each and every one of us. Let's look at the scripture. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 1. Listen to the word. Every commandment which I command you today, you must be careful to observe that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land of which the Lord swore to your fathers. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you and praise you for your word. Guide us to see me, Lord. And I am willing. I'm showed up. I am willing to do whatever it is you ask of me. Lord, you're awesome and we love you. In Christ's name, amen. Now you see, God was getting ready to take His people, the Israelites, into the promised land. And He gave them commandments. Now also too, there's different ways that He wanted them to follow His command. And there are several ways that, that are for us as we are His children today. One of the things, one of the ways that we can follow God is with our heart. Now you see, we've heard this story many times. That God sent Moses and Aaron down to Egypt. And they was to encourage Pharaoh to let God's people go. But the Bible said that every time that they went to Pharaoh, Pharaoh would, would, his heart would harden. So did God harden Pharaoh's heart? Did God take away Pharaoh's free will? No. This is what Pharaoh, he chose he chose this. God gave uh, Pharaoh many opportunities to listen to Moses and to be willing to do what God wanted him to do, but his heart was so hardened that it would not respond. So can that happen to us? Can our hearts be hardened today, thousands of years later? Yes. When we completely refuse to do what God wants us to, when we reject God time after time after time, I believe that God told Pharaoh, and He's telling us when our hearts are hardened, He said, okay, have it your way. Live with your hardened heart. And you see, I believe sometimes God has to break our heart in order to change our attitude, in order for us to see what God wants us to do, and that is, He wants us to repent. He wants us to turn completely around. You see, also too, in our heart, in our heart it shows how much we love God, how much we obey God, and how much we love others, and how much we are willing to do what God wants us to do. And you see, it doesn't matter the possessions we have, the achievements we have, or anything that we have. The most important thing that we can have is, is have God and be completely, 100% sold out to Him. The next thing that we can do in order to follow His command is our will. You see, God has good and acceptable plans for each and every one of us. We don't know what they are. But God has, according to Jeremiah, God, even from the very beginning, God had a plan for each and every one of us. And in order for us to follow God's plan, then we have to be conformed to Him. We're not to be conformed to this world because this world we know is, is horrible. It's full of evil. And it's full of all kinds of, of evil things that goes on. But in order for our will to be conformed to His, then we have to let the Holy Spirit come within us and change our will until it's what God wants each and every one of us to be. You know, we can we cannot follow the, the world a lot of times, but we can still be arrogant. We can still be prideful. We can still be hateful. 
We can have some desire, some things of the world, so we have to make sure that we allow the Holy Spirit to come and renew and redirect our mind into what God wants it to be. The third thing is, is our mind. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7 says, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. Now think about this. No one, no one can comprehend what God has on his mind. No one can comprehend what God's going to do. But you see, if we are willing to be led by the Holy Spirit, and if we are willing to spend every moment that we can with God and have an intimate relationship with Him and allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us, we can have some of the thoughts that God has. We can know some of the things that God is going to do. And we can have that assurance that God's going to answer our prayers. But you see also too, just as what we feed our physical bodies are very important, but what we feed our minds is very important as well. What we watch, what we listen to, what we, uh, what we, uh, uh, what we see, and, and who we fellowship with plays a very important, mind, a very important part of our mindset that can help us get closer to God. You see, also too, just like what we eat and what we put into our mind can play an important part on our physical health. And we can have a healthier body if we just listen to God and follow God. The other thing that I want us to look at is our body. 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. And it says, chapter 6 verse 19 and 20. And it says, Or do you not know that your body is of the temple of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own, for you were bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body, in your spirit, which are God's. Now think about this. Paul says that our body belongs to God. Now I've heard people say, huh? There's no way. My body belongs to me. Nobody's going to tell me what to do. I'm going to come and go and do with my body whatever I feel, feel like doing. You see, what they have is that they have this mindset that it's all about them. But the Bible tells us once we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior and, and are filled with the Holy Spirit, then our body is a temple. Our body belongs to God. And we ought to use our body the way God wants each and every one of us to use that. However God wants. It is not our body anymore. It belongs to God. The next thing I want us to look at is our finances. Now finance comes out of James chapter 5, 1 through 6. Listen to the word. It says, Come now, you rich, weep and have, for your misery that are coming upon you. Your riches are corrupt, and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver are corroded, and their corrosion will be a witness against you, and will eat your flesh like fire. You have heaped up treasures in the last day. Indeed, the wages of the laborers who mowed your fields, which you kept back, back from fraud, cried out, and the cries of the reapers have reached the ears of the Lord. You have lived on the earth in pleasure and luxury. You have battened your hearts as in a day of slaughter. You have condemned, you have murdered the just. He does not resist you. You see, James says, <laughs> James says it doesn't matter what kind of, how many houses we have, how many acres of ground we have, what kind of equipment we have, how many cars we have, or how many, how many motorcycles we have. It doesn't matter because the Bible tells us when we take our last breath or the Lord comes back to get the church, everything we have is not going to amount to a hill of beans because we're not going to be able to take it with us. Oh yes, we need money. We need money to pay our light bill our food bill, our water bill, 
and, and also to be able to take care of the necessary things that we need to have. But also, too, we are to help the church, and the church is to help the missionaries and help the poor. Yes, we need money in order to do certain things, but the Bible tells us the root of all evil is money. And so what we need to do is make, in order to have a merry, merry heart, in order to be able to do what God wants, then we need to be connected to God, and we need to be able to use the finances that God gives us in order for Him, because He's the giver of all things. The last thing I want us to look at is our future. You know, we spend a lot of time planning. You know, we plan, sometimes we may plan for years on a job that we want to make sure that our schooling, that everything is ready and, and in order so we can achieve that job that we have always wanted. We plan for a wedding. We plan for, for, uh, to go on a vacation. We spend a lot of time planning. But you know, I wonder, how much time do we spend on where we're going to spend eternity? How much time do you spend where you're going to spend eternity? You see, do you put a lot of time and effort into that? Or do you, do you just assume that everything's going to be okay and everybody's going to go to heaven? But the Bible tells me that where we spend eternity is the most important thing in our whole life. And we need to spend all the time that we can and to make sure that we are connected with God. You know, we don't know what's going to happen after resurrection. We really don't know what's going to take place in heaven. or We don't know what eternity is going to be like. But if you're going to write and write down anything and take notes, write this down. This is very important. As long as we got our hand locked in the hand of God, and we are willing to give our whole heart to God, our whole will to God, a whole body to God, a whole finances to God, and give all of our future to Him, then and our hands locked into Him, He's going to take care of us. He's going to take care of us, and He's going to make sure. He's going to make sure that whatever needs to be done, whether it's on this earth or whether it's in eternity, He's going to take care of us. So, my question is, are you ready? Are you ready for eternity? And if so, do you know where you're going to spend it? You see, we're another day closer. Another day closer. And it could happen tomorrow. Listen to this last song.
get ready to close. Just like the song says, trust and obey. If we trust in the Lord and obey with all of our my heart, mind, soul, and strength, then everything is going to be the way God wants it to be. Let us pray. Almighty God, we come to you and thank you and praise you for this word. We praise you for the awesome God that you are. And yes, Lord, we cannot meet as we once did. We cannot meet as a group. But yet, Lord, I'm asking that each and every one of us will be willing to, to encourage each other through prayer, through phone calls and cards and, and whatever it is, Lord. But yes, we are to be united. We are to be one. So, Lord, we just give you pray and praise and glory. If we trust in you and obey you, then yes, we will be able to see you someday and be able to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. Come on in. In Christ's name, amen.